by the Society of Fat Mermaids. I'm your host, Mermaid Shamoni, founder of the Society of Fat Mermaids. Join me as we chat with fabulous fat folks, making ways to do fantastic and interesting things. We will learn about body positivity and fat liberation, and we will occasionally chat to folks such as film makers who make life easier for fat merfolk. Let's dive right on in for this week's episode. No, we are live. Welcome <laughs> to Fat Mermaids Make Waves, a new podcast by Society of Fat Mermaids. I am Shay Monique, your host, and I am joined today by the absolutely fantastic Mermaid Montera. Thank so you. We are, I'm so happy you're here. We are a brand new podcast. Um, you will see that I have recorded our first episodes at Mermagicon 2020, and they have yet to go live. So those will be coming out around the same time that this is coming out. But this is my first, like, let's schedule in studio with a fabulous fishy. During this podcast, I want to personally learn more about fat liberation and body positivity. I feel like I've kind of been thrown into the space of being like an advocate for those things without really knowing a lot about like the kind of like work that came behind it that even helps facilitate us being able to do what we do. And so every episode, I'm going to read just a little bit of a resource to get us started and then we'll get into our interview. And what we're going to do just as a idea of format with um, this podcast is every other episode roughly we're gonna record a fat mermaid or interview a fat mermaid. And then every other episode we're gonna record somebody who's like a mermaid on land. So not someone who swims in a tail but is doing really, really cool, awesome stuff and making waves in their own way. So I'm going to screen share for the people who are watching online and read just a little blurb of an article I found today about fat liberation. And the article is called Four Reasons Why We Need Fat, Min fat Liberation. And it is published in the Wear Your Voice uh, MAG website. And so I'm just gonna read what I've highlighted the difference between body positivity and fat liberation is that in my eyes, body positivity deals more with feelings and giving each other kudos when needed. Fat liberation is here to save lives and advocate for the medical needs of those who are constantly dismissed by health officials. McAlphin, one of the speakers at Fat Liberation, recounted a time in which doctors ignored her health complaints, insisting that she lose weight to reduce the discomfort. The recommendation, steeped in fat shame, resulted in Ms. McAlphin's doctors almost missing a growth. McAlphin was sick for months, perhaps years, because she was not getting the same health care as her thin counterparts. Who knows how many issues go untreated and how many fat people are dying because of this systematic fat phobia. And then because this article is called Four Reasons Why We Need Fat Liberation, and it is written by, where is our byline? Laurel Dickman. I'm going to just read those four headlines, but I encourage you to go to this article and read it yourself. One, there's little job security when you're fat at work. Two, fat people can't be vulnerable. Three, fat people are told they need to be grateful for having a partner. Four, Toxic relationships aren't limited to romantic partners. So please check that article out. I found it very informative. Um, and yeah, now let's talk to this fishy. So Mermaid Montera, when I first started Society of Fat Mermaids and started just kind of going on Instagram and looking for fat, fluffy, plus size, squishy fishies, Mermaid Montera, because your tagline is the manatee mermaid. You're like one of the first, like not just like fat, but like, I love my body, fat mermaids that I found. And so I've been wanting to start this podcast for years. And um, I always wanted to interview you first. Now, lucky for me, in the intervening years, I have actually gotten to know you and I get to swim with you and play with you and splash with you. But at the time, I didn't know all of that was going to happen. So again, welcome. Again, thank you for having me. 
You're very, very welcome. I'm so excited you are here. So how did you get into mermaiding? Oh gosh, how does anyone get into mermaiding? You either have somebody throw you in a tail or you see somebody, a big name, someone famous online, and you decide you have to get into it. Um, I first got interested in mermaiding probably six or seven years ago, whenever I saw Hannah Frazier. Okay. Every her as Hannah Mermaid. Um, and just thought what she was doing was so cool. I mean, she makes her own tales and talks on environmentalism and, you know, works with all sorts of different groups for conservation. And I thought that was the coolest thing to be a mermaid and protecting the oceans. I thought that was just the neatest thing. And she's a model as well. She's gorgeous, but it was just so cool. It was underwater modeling to an entirely new level. Um, in the following years, I was hanging out on Mer Network and as we did in the old days, we still do. <laughs> Um, and looking up how to make my own tail and bought the monofin and bought some neoprene, bought some, um, <laughs> don't use silicone caulking, you know, it's <laughs> not what we use, but that seven ish years ago, it was what we were, we were trying when you were on a budget and hand making this for yourself and it never got finished. It was a lot of things that it was so much trial and error and I kept taking things apart and putting it back together and taking it apart and putting it back together until I pretty much ruined all of my supplies. <laughs> uh, it's definitely, table making is not an easy, not an easy feat. Um, but so it kind of just hung out there as something I had wanted to do and something I really wanted to get into, but still hadn't quite got the tail yet. And then in, I think it was 2016, um, a LARP group that I work with um, needed mermaids for one of their events. And I smashed into their inboxes and said, me, <laughs> me, <laughs> I want to do it so bad. Give me the reason. Let me do it. I mean, at this point, you know, I started learning. You could buy a tail, but I hadn't, you know, quite jumped in yet. Um, I was still working at a lower, lower paying job and it was mermaid tails are a big expense. Um, so I was like, give me the reason. Okay. <laughs> Say yes, let me do it. Um, and they came back and they said, actually, we're hiring professionals. And I said, boo. <laughs> I said, that's awesome. There's going to be professional mermaids there. That's awesome. Maybe someday that will be me. And then shortly before the event, maybe three weeks out, they said, only two of the three professional mermaids are coming. Do you want to be the third? And I said, yes, <laughs> rush to tail, just a, just a simple fabric tail. Uh, my first tail was a Miami beach mermaid's tail. Um, threw it on in Ohio for pretty much the, I, I wore it once in the pool just to make sure I wasn't going to drown. I was pretty confident I wasn't going to drown. I float, you can't drown me. Um, but just to be sure <laughs> that I wasn't going to go straight down for whatever reason or make a complete fool of myself. Uh, tried it on once in the pool, took it to Ohio and swam with um, Katie Mermaid of the Ohio Mermaids and Mermaid Gem. And that was pretty much my debut. I mean, I was, I was a novice performing next to seasoned professionals, but it was a comfortable environment because it was, it was my LARP. It was a LARP that I've been involved in in years. Okay. I knew the histories, I knew the lore. I knew the characters, I knew other players. So it was, it was very, a very nice way to start my mermaid journey. And I just took off from there. And then um, I think it was the next summer, Mythic Tales dropped. I was at the same LARP and was scheduling my scenes around when Finfolk was gonna be dropping Mythic Tales because six months later, I had to upgrade. Of course, of course, of course, of course. So that so brought a full my LARP that I was at that LARP and I'm like, no guys, I can't take a scene at 11 o'clock. I have to be online <laughs> <laughs> to get this mythic tale. Yes. That's so, awesome. um, so for people who don't know what a LARP is, what is a LARP? Oh yes. I guess that would be, that'd be useful to explain. A LARP is a live action role play. Um, it's most popularly um, displayed in the media as um, 
boys, mostly dressed in their medieval garb, hitting each other with foam swords. And it's not all that. The one I was attending in particular was a um, kind of a Harry Potter Wizarding World sort of a LARP. And it was a, uh, a lot of fun. If anyone's ever, if you're into acting, if you're into some improvisation, LARP is so much fun. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. What was it like to like, yeah, basically have your second time in a tale be with like super seasoned uh mermaids what was that like oh i'm sure i kind of made a fool of myself here they are in their gorgeous silicone tails um and uh, mermaid katie's tail is uh, still within the circus iron pod it's now mermaid katja's tail um those things those silicone tails were gorgeous and they were the first ones i'd seen in person and I just, I, <laughs> I still to this day hope I didn't weird them out too much. I was very fangirly. Um, I just want to know everything. I'm like, what makeup are you using? What are you doing to be waterproof? Can I see your tail? Can I touch your tail? How do you put your tail? You know, all, all the all the questions. Right, right, right. But it was it was so much fun. And they were both really supportive. They were, you know, the first mermaids I'd really met. And they were just, they could not have been nicer. I mean, they were an absolute dream to work with. And, Mermaid Jim is, Mermaid Jim is like the sweetest fish in the sea. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad that was like a positive experience. Cause I imagine that could have been like really intimidating, but I guess you were like so excited. You were just like, I'm going for this thing. I was like standing out in the hallway before I went into makeup with them, like hyperventilating for a minute, but it was, it was okay. Okay. And so now a few years later, like, it was, also, like last it, was on, it was on my home turf. So I was a little more comfortable. I'm like, you guys are very famous. I know who you are. You are coming into my my safe place. Welcome. Okay. <laughs> so now a few years later, like if I'm just like, who who is Mermaid Montera? Like, how would you describe Mermaid Montera now? Mermaid Montera. Um, Mermaid Montera is well, she's both a children's entertainer and as well as well as I do adult parties as well. Um in the in the appropriate fashion for adult parties. <laughs> um, I do a lot of festivals and everything. Um, do West Virginia Renaissance Festival at Mermaid Montera. Um, she kind of I wanted to use my own name. When my parents named me Montera, they're like it's one word like Cher, Madonna, and I was like, wow, thanks guys. Let me live up to that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But, and, and for a long time, I didn't like it. You never find it on a keychain, you know, in a gas station. It's, there's Terra. There's never Montera. And I'm named after a lighthouse in Half Moon Bay, California. So as I've grown up and embraced my Mersona, I'm much more comfortable in my name. I love my name. It's a unique name. I've never met another Montera. Um, so she kind of just, she grew as I did events. Um, I wasn't really sure where I was going to go with her. You know, I've always been told I have that the Disney princess, you know, kind of persona and the singing to birds and little animals and all of that. Uh, so I didn't want to go, you know, the full aerial. I definitely wanted to find myself in this. And so she, she's just, she's just kind of grown with me. She's, she's a little bit shy, um, at first because sometimes the children come up and they're, they're very apprehensive. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. The first time I met humans as well, I was also really scared. It's okay. Um, when she gets to know you, she's a total chatterbox like like me. She's she's really just me in events. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I identify her more as um, I call her a tank mermaid. A lot of people say, "Are you from the ocean?" And as a mermaid who doesn't really get to swim that much in the ocean, um, I don't like to say yes. And then you know they're like Pacific Ocean or you know. Which ocean are you from? Where are you from? Mm -hmm. Where are you from? From a pond? Do you live in this lake? Do you ever leave this lake? You get all the questions. So I like to say I'm a tank mermaid. I can travel around. I take breaks in, you know, a bathtub or something while I'm traveling to wet my fins a little bit. Um, and I, I swim in I swim in those really big, the big clear ones with the, the lanes. I think they're called the lanes, um, and they taste really bad. <laughs> pool a pool yes that's what they're called yes i swim in lots of pool you know i kind of just she's just kind of grown and emerged as as i have and 
the amount of people that I run into, mostly adults that come up and they say, oh my God, you're a plus size mermaid. Where was this when I was, when I was growing up? Oh my God, you're, you're I, I get that you're so brave. I get the, thank you for doing this. I get the, I'm so excited to meet you. Can I give you a hug? Right, <laughs> I mean, right. everyone, everyone was so nice about it. So, you know, I really taken it and embraced being this plus size mermaid. And my mom teases me because, you know, I have mermaid pictures everywhere now. And if you knew me pre mermaiding, I'm, I'm shy. Like mermaid Montero, I'm kind of shy. Um, I have not always been bod very body positive. Um, I've definitely been unhappy in my skin before, but I've never felt more myself than when I'm in a tail. It's, it's, it's a very strange thing. It's a very, very unique <laughs> kind of interesting thing. But so I've taken that and used that and just kind of built that into my brand as anybody can be a mermaid. You, you don't even have to have a tail. I mean, being a mermaid is a mindset. Being a mermaid is part of who you are. And yeah, just all grown out of that. <laughs> I love it. So how did you come up with the manatee mermaid? Because, I mean, I don't, like, that's yeah. part of how I found you. It's like, yeah. Well, <laughs> the original Chubby Mermaids, right? <laughs> you know, way back when and all the sailor lore and everything, you know, when sailors were seeing these women, they were actually seeing manatees and dugongs. Um, and if you look at one from beneath, they actually have kind of, it looks like they have knees. It's really actually kind of creepy. Don't look at manatees from beneath. <laughs> but just... They're so graceful and so sweet, but they're so big. I mean, the, it shows that this graceful creature, size doesn't matter for them either. And the bigger of a sea cow you are, the healthier of a sea cow you are. So. <laughs> I like it. Ooh. Yeah, that, that, that was kind of, that was kind of how it, it came about was they were the original chubby mermaid. And you know, they're, they're silly too. They're, they're goofy. They like to eat. They like to nap. I find them very relatable. <laughs> fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> eat, like to nap. Yeah. Lore sailors from afar. I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. Um, <laughs> very cool. So what do you love about being like a fat mermaid? Like what is the best part of that for you? Uh, the best part is definitely the adults that come up and say, oh my God, where were you when I was a child? <laughs> or, oh my God, I, I, want, I want to do this. Can I do this? And then getting more and more people into it. I mean, so many people will come up and see us in a tail and they're like, can I, can I do this? And we're like, of course you can do this. Come swim with us. Where are you located? Let's hook you up with your local pod. I mean, we've had people come from all over and we've connected them with their pods from all over and breed more mermaids. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That is so cool. That is so cool. And you say you feel the most yourself in a tail. So what do you feel like yeah. when you're in a tail? Well, growing up fat, I'm sure a lot of people can relate. You don't always feel beautiful. You don't always feel graceful. You look around a room and you're the largest one in it. And just being a mermaid somehow, it was really like for the first time I felt beautiful. Okay. And a little narcissistic. My mama teases me. My mommy tells me I'm being narcissistic. <laughs> but I mean, I'm embracing it. I'm finally figuring out kind of how to love myself. And if finding love for myself through mermaiding is how I do it, then I, and that's how I do it. Um, but it's just, yeah, that's how I really got comfortable. And a lot of people say, where do you get the confidence? Oh my God, your entire stomach is out. Are you, how are you comfortable? And the answer is you're not always. It's a little unnerving sometimes. It's a little, little much, but it takes bravery too. And unfortunately, it takes bravery to be fat, but yeah. to take yeah. up space in public places and not feel like you need to apologize to anyone for being there, being who you are. This yeah. is all very true. So do you feel like the like comfort and self-love that you've developed through mermaiding, does that make its way through your day-to-day -day life? 
I'm definitely more confident than I was before I started mermaiding. Um, and I definitely have a lot less tolerance for people who may have something to say about it. Okay. Um, which I don't get, I don't get too much. There are definitely mermaids that get a lot of flack for their bodies, which is stupid, but, um, yeah, definitely no tolerance for it anymore. I respect that. What is your just like favorite part of mermaiding? Is it how much you feel? Is it like, your, do you have like a favorite thing you love to do? I love all of it. <laughs> I love all the people that I get to meet, which is phenomenal for me to say with my anxiety. Um, <laughs> no, we meet so many different people with all of our events and everything. Um, I love getting to do West Virginia Renaissance Festival. That is so much fun. Um, but really all, all of our festivals, any chance to get out and, you know, be seen by people. I mean, it's a mermaid sighting. Mermaids are real. Oh my God, mom, look, mermaid. Mom, look, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just so much fun. It's fun for me. It's fun for everyone around us. It's just such a magical thing. And I mean, you know, it's, being able to create that magic for children and adults who get just as excited. It's so much fun. It's just, that is that's, that's so the best part is, is the people, is the creating the magic. And So you are a shy fishy who really enjoys working with people, meeting people, interacting with people. <laughs> yes, but the first time it was really scary, okay? <laughs> I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. I'm just trying to get the story straight. This week's episode of Fat Mermaids Make Waves is brought to you by you. We want to know how you're making waves in your world. Whether it's wearing a bikini for the first time, diving into your first mermaid tail, finishing that grad school program, or reading some educational materials that are expanding your world view. We want to know how you're making waves. Go on our website, fatmermaidsmakewaves.com, and leave us a voice memo that we may include on a future episode. <laughs> and so you are quite the tail collector. Have you found it to be challenging to find tails in your size? Not. It's hard to get them to fit quite right when you got the booty. Some of them tend to sit a little bit lower, but they'll come up okay in front, but in the back, there's not as much fabric because they're cut okay. straight across. Um, I've had luck with um, the Finful Crappic Tails have worked pretty well for me. The second generation is better than the first. The first did not have a lot of extra that you could pull up in the back. Um, and my Finfolk Mythics, my Finfolk Mythics have been good because that neoprene underneath is so stretchy. Okay. But if you're too much taller than me, I think you might run into a height problem. <laughs> but, That's bad. Yeah. But they're, they're um, definitely, in looking forward to like a silicone tail, I still I really want a thin folk tail. Um, but it's hard to find a tail maker that does really good plus size tails. Because that waist, you have to be able to get over your thighs and your hips but then have it go back and fit your waist. And you don't want that gapping in the back either, so. Yeah. Silicone is where I think the really hard part is, which is why I haven't fully committed to that yet, but. I can see how that would be tricky because you don't have the amount of give that you have with fabric yeah. for it to just snap back or whatever. Yeah. Um, so how many mermaid tails do you have, Montera? can't ask a girl that. <laughs> I mean, you, you, ask me you, that. you can say it's like my age. You're, I'm, I'm not going to answer. I mean, you can say that. like. <laughs> but I can see quite a few behind you. Um. Let's see. On the shelf, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, there's two more in the garage. There's one more on top. So we're probably hitting 15 or 16. Okay. All right. Very well, very well. And do you have a favorite? Yes. My green one. My green one is my favorite. Okay. That's the one I see you in the most. That's the one you see me in the most. That's that's kind of my signature tail. And while it is very aerial and I wasn't kind of trying to go with that, 
I'm more of a traditional kind of mermaid. I'm into the greens and blues. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and that, that tale, that is a one of a kind mythic tale. So it's very special. <laughs> awesome. Wow. You look absolutely fantastic in it. Thank you. And that, that one, I did get that one custom fitted to me. I bought it in a size larger than I needed and I did go and have it tailored because I didn't want that, you know, we we're having hip and waist issues. Gotcha. 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 If it's that's the hips, awesome that's tip. The so you're like mermaid Montero pro tip is buy a size up and get your tail tailored. And because if it's a mythic, you also get extra scales because if they take out part of it, you get extra scales, which you can save for repairs, tops or accessories. Ooh, that's a very good mermaid Montero. <laughs> you know, I need a little mermaid Montero. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how high tech I get with that. <laughs> I'm just going to here. Mermaid tip. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Um, do you have any other mermaid tips for, uh, yeah, any other like little mermaid Montero tips you're willing to yeah, share? I do have one. I'm going to actually, um, this is from Mermaid uh, Aria, and uh, it's to use the NYX. Um, Gosh, it's, it's, it's a primer. It's the NYX primer. It comes in nude and it comes in white, but it, you blend it. And then whatever you put on top of it, it's waterproof. Anything. What? Anything. It's a little tiny tub. It's like $7. And that it's is the greatest thing I've ever found. I can use any palette I own and it stays on underwater. I put it on my cheeks and I keep the blush. Put a little on my lips. I keep the lipstick. Phenomenal. So the mermaid. NYX <laughs> mermaid tip. <laughs> mermaid Montera. So I put the NYX primer on mm-hmm. and then anything on top of it will be waterproof. Yep. And then I, I always seal with um, Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. But yeah, combination of those two things, your makeup isn't going anywhere. That's an awesome yeah. tip. And if you use the white, your uh, stuff will come out brighter. Yeah. Which is useful underwater. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's a really great tip. Okay. Um, what is my next question for you? Um, What's the most fun thing you've ever gotten to do as a mermaid? Most fun thing I've ever gotten to do as a mermaid? <laughs> um so many how can you choose just one jay um okay, the most memorable thing you've ever gotten to do as a mermaid most memorable jay <laughs> the most memorable it wasn't on purpose but it's probably the most memorable so i'll give you that one most memorable was um we were doing oyster cracking um for necklaces and we had a little birthday girl come up to do one and it's totally random i buy from several different vendors and no idea what kind of pearls are going to be in these oysters until you crack them open. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two. Sometimes they're natural colored, sometimes they are dyed, sometimes the colors are enhanced. She got eight. She got eight in one o- small oyster. Eight. Wow. And her parents came back the next day and they said, okay, we have to ask, how did you do that? <laughs> like, did, did you did you have it set aside? And we said, Pure mermaid magic. It's the most we've ever had. We've never had more than six, I think, in one of our oysters. And this little birthday girl got eight. Wow. So that's definitely the most the most memorable because that was some legit mermaid magic. No sleight of hand here. That's super, super cool. Um, was so sweet. And she was so excited. I'd be super excited. Eight oysters or eight pearls and one oyster. That's amazing. They were colorful too. It was a complete fluke pun. (laughs) That's a good one. I see what you did there. Thanks. Okay. Well, what do you love about your hair? Love my hair. (laughs) (laughs) It sparkles. It sparkles. Like, well, I don't think it's all sparkly at us. Um, this is some great mermaid hair happening if you are listening on audio um i will check out the youtube to see the really amazing mermaid hair we've got going on right now 
That just, I'm obsessed with the tie-in fairy tinsels. Absolutely obsessed. Probably spend about as much on them a year as I do mermaid tails. Um, <laughs> a little less, a little less. Slight <laughs> difference. Slightly less. But no, I love them. I mean, it's they're great. And I mean, they show up in the sun, they show up in the water. People stop me on the street and ask me how they're in there. <laughs> and what do you say when they ask? Do you tell I'm them like, or are you like, truth. <laughs> I tell them that they're tied in to like one strand of hair and they stay until the hair falls out. I tell the truth. You're so sweet. And then direct them to where I get it done because I'm like, and where do you get it done? Can I go get this done? I'm like, of course you can go get it done. Here's my person. That's cool. That's cool. So who's your person? Shout out your person. My person is Kelly Roach. She goes by um, Cassandra the Fairy. She's on Instagram and stuff. Um, she is the one who does hair tinseling at Mermagicon through Magical Mysteries. Um, yeah, Kelly. Okay. <laughs> and she works in what geographic area? Um, DMV. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. And does she like only do like festivals or can you just like go to her? I mean, when there's not like a global pandemic, can you just go to her anytime? When there's not a global pandemic, you can find her at festivals or you can set up a private party or you can just have her come do you or okay. <laughs> just be flexible. She's, she's great. She's great. <laughs> Fairy hair is super accessible. Yes. Awesome. And she, she's, in, she's in my pig. She did Pancake's Tail. Oh. The pancake, pancake the Mini Pig and I had matching pink pencils in our hair. <laughs> That's so cute. So, 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 so cute. Okay. What is the thing you're most proud of in your mermaid work? The thing I'm most proud of in my mermaid work? Um, I raised a lot of money for the Save the Manatee Club, um, which is probably my favorite charity near and dear to my heart is Manatee Mermaid. Um, yeah. That's just awesome. doing Facebook fundraisers and, you know, reaching out to the community, reaching out to uh, my conservational groups, reaching out to the environmentalism groups and just seeing, you know, if, it, if anyone has even a dollar, can you put it towards this? And I raised a lot of money this year. I was very proud of myself. That's I fantastic. In, yeah, there was, um, there was also a, a charity run, which was a 5 or 10K. You could do what you wanted, socially distanced. So it was kind of a do it in your own time. Um, that was the Save the Chubby Mermaids run. Um, I have my medal. My medal's here. So can I get it in frame? Ah. Get it in frame. <laughs> I have a medal. Oh, fancy. Yeah. For participation. Everyone got one for participation. Everybody wins because you helped save the manatees. <laughs> okay. And why do the mermaids need save or ma mermaids? Why do the manatees need saving? <laughs> well, the manatees... Um, if you don't know about the red tide, you should look up red tide. It's essentially a pollution-y issue that comes in and wipes out a lot of the wildlife down, down the coast. Um, manatees especially, manatees are fragile. They're poor dumb little sea cows. They have so many issues. Um, when humans feed them, they become less afraid of humans and they start coming up to boats and things and then they get hit by boats mm. they're, just, they're just poor little disasters and a lot of them are scarred up from boat propellers and they're just they're just little messes manatees need some help <laughs> gotcha 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 um so like what are the like orgs you like raise money for like how do they help the manatees like I will say the Manatee Club is a conservation group that is down in Florida and they focus mm -hmm. on a lot of the rehabilitation and um, yeah. everything for the manatees. They, they take in a lot of the sick manatees. They're the ones that answer calls if someone thinks the manatees in distress and they go take care of them, bring them in for rehabilitation if they need it and yeah, help them out, get them, get them released back to the wild if, if they're able and if not, they, they keep them, keep them safe. And, Super cool, super cool. How has coronavirus impacted your mermaiding? Mm. Yeah, I know. Mm. <laughs> well, 
no one's swimming as much as we were, are we? <laughs> we're all feeling pretty landlocked. Yeah. More so than usual. Um, yeah, all festivals were canceled. Renaissance Fair was canceled. It's been a quiet year. <laughs> um, spent a lot of that time trying to get ready for next year and come up with more new and exciting things and everything. But New and exciting? Like what? New and exciting things. Um, we've got some more stuff that we're going to be selling at our booths. And we have some more things, perhaps, that we'll be doing at West Virginia Renaissance Festival. And we're maybe building some things at West Virginia Renaissance Festival. So. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Where in West Virginia is the Renaissance Festival? Lewisburg. There we go. Lewisburg. 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 Yeah. Bam. Lewisburg, West Virginia. Yes. It's been almost two years. Lewisburg, <laughs> West Virginia. Yes, it is a tiny little Renaissance Festival. Um, nothing like Maryland. If, if you've been to Maryland Renaissance Festival, it's nothing like Maryland. But it is rapidly growing it has an incredible uh set of cast and players um the joust is put on by the uh the hanlon lee action theater which does um they do like a joust in three parts so you have to stay all day and you have to go to all three jousts oh because it's okay. story based Ooh, I like the story. <laughs> it's it's very it's very cool it's different than a lot of the the other uh, Renaissance festivals that I've been to is that you really get involved in the plot, and I mean it's it's kind of like it's kind of like a LARP. Um, okay. Is there this plot running all day. If you go track down the king, if you go track down those knights, everyone has kind of pieces of the story and can tell you what's going on that day, and it feeds into this excellent plot. It's very very cool. That sounds super cool. Yeah. Um... You know what? You asked me what my favorite thing I've done as a mermaid is. It's probably pushing people in a little floating battle boat in the lake at West Virginia. What? Tell us the story. Well, they've got these little paddle boats and okay. uh, they're mostly mostly for display. They're, they're not for, for public use, unfortunately. Maybe something worth looking at in the future, but uh, for now, <laughs> For now, no one's paying for those sorts of permits. Um, <laughs> but uh, we have uh, our favorite cast member who is always willing to do something with the mermaids in the lake, cause a scene. <laughs> and um, yes, we took the boat out and staged a sea battle <laughs> in, our, in our little lagoon. <laughs> and because these, these boats are just so nice and buoyant, you can push them as a mermaid. So we literally just grab onto the back and the mermaids are steering the boats. Oh, and it was really fun. It was kind of like bumper cars while being steered by mermaids. That while people like were putting on, you know, cap guns. So. <laughs> <laughs> and yelling at each other and you'll never take me alive and falling off the boats into the lake. And yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So that, that has to probably be my funnest thing that I've done. Okay. 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 So Montero. Yes. If like I stumbled across your Instagram and was like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. I want to do what you do. I want to be a mermaid. All that stuff. What advice would you give me? Just reach out. I mean, you can just message message us. I mean, any of the mermaids are pretty much really happy to help anybody who's interested in it connect to their local pods and their local areas. Um, we help people get tails all the time. People are like, where did you get this tail? What tail would you start in? You know, I've had plus size people come and ask for tail recommendations and generally, you know, direct them towards, are you looking for a beginner tail or have you worked in a monofin before and then help them find something that's, that's up their alley. So. Yeah, big part of mermaiding is making more mermaids. It's helping spread the magic to people who want to be involved in it and letting everybody find out what's so special about it because it's so hard to just tell someone what is so special about it. Right, right, right. Super cool. And like, what would it like? What advice would you give to like someone who's been mermaiding for a while and they like want to like go pro? Like, what does that mean to you? What advice would you give to someone in that? Well, a lot of mermaids have a different definition necessarily of what pro is. Some people consider it when it is your full-time job. 
Some people consider it as a part-time job. Some people consider it as long as you're making money on it, you're a pro. Um, and I feel that as long as you are presenting yourself, you know, as a, you, you are an ambassador to this community. Not everybody meets the mermaid every day. So as long as you're presenting yourself as an ambassador and um, charging the right amount for um, your appearances, your parties, whatnot, uh, not undercutting the industry, I think anyone can really be a professional. I think it's about your mindset. I think it's about your personality and just do it. Just do it. Just some people started out on their own and built their own teams. Some people go out and find a team that exists and have joined those teams. Um, I've pretty much grown my own, my own little team is, is grown here. And you know, we just, we just do little things. We're not, we're not a big company. We're three ish people with a couple extras who, who come and go when they're available. And it's fun. It's just, just fun. And there's not all there's not always a lot of money in it. Um, some events you make more, some events you don't make as much. But it's always fun. Hard work, but always fun. <laughs> okay, hard work. Hard work. Carrying around these tail bags with these thirty pound tails, uphill in the rain, in the dark, both ways. You know. <laughs> okay, so it's not all just like looking gorgeous and happening to <laughs> not always but i think it's always worth it <laughs> okay very cool very cool very cool um how can we support you like how can people follow you how can yeah how can well i'm on instagram and tiktok and facebook and i have a website and it's all under mermaid montera Awesome. And if you're and watching, I actually don't have underscores except for my website. My website is just mermaidmontera.com. It needs a little updating. I've neglected it a little bit this year with COVID because I, I had all my events lined up that are upcoming. I have my upcoming events and uh, then everything got canceled and I didn't go take it down because I was sad. <laughs> oh, you brought it up. Look at it. Oh, you brought it up. Yeah. So if you're watching it online, <laughs> you can like. Yeah, out. see, it still, it still has more Magic on 2020 on there and West Virginia Renaissance Festival because I was too sad, to, <laughs> too sad to go change them. But yeah, it's cute, and I post photos from the events that we do, and that's fun. That's fun. Yeah, I'm a little slower on TikTok. I am, uh, I am old. This stuff is hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many different little social media things. Yes, I, don't, I don't know how some people can keep up with all of the social media. My main one probably is my Instagram. Um, I have your Instagram there. if people are watching yeah. and not listening. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's the, the easiest one for me is, is Instagram. Oh, look at all these beautiful pictures. Um, Okay, so you, your favorite thing to do in mermaiding is to um, do events and meet people and kind of connect with them in that way. But you do oh, some really you. stunning modeling, I gotta say. Thank you. I, I uh, yes, modeling has uh, come up a lot with the mermaiding world as well. I do, I do do some people modeling on the side. Um, I don't really post a lot of that anywhere though. I've been published um, a couple times in a couple different magazines and a couple different coffee table books. Um, but yeah, since it's mostly stuff with legs, I don't post it as much on, on my mermaid socials, but yeah. And that makes sense. Yeah, um, so my modeling's in there too a little bit. I'm still trying to push that curves are beautiful, fat is beautiful, bodies come in all shapes and sizes. There's somebody for everybody and everybody loves some type of body so these words are all true okay and then since our podcast is called fat mermaids make waves yes. how do you feel you're making waves what are you doing to make waves well gosh the same thing every fat mermaid is doing which is just being a fat mermaid yeah. <laughs> um yeah you know we we're very pro body pro inclusivity pro 
don't care what your age is, don't care what your skin color is, don't care what your gender is. If you want to come swim and be a mermaid, come come do it. Just, just do it. Nike swish. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just inclusive. I mean, it's 2021. What are you doing? Excluding people, bullying people, gatekeeping. Eh. Just do the fun thing. Let people join you and do the fun thing together. Now you have more friends and you're all doing the fun thing. So Maybe friends. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that's 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 my biggest way of making waves. As you know, all, all of our events, we do run into so many people from everywhere. I mean, we've connected people pods in Germany. I mean, we've connected people with their pod. You want to go do this. We'll help you do this. That is super, super, super cool. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I see your shirt? Can you see my shirt? I am wearing my really cute little, little anime. <laughs> I'm a little, got a little, it's backwards. I'm still trying to get used to the flip, the flipped camera here. Little, yeah, little mermaids. <laughs> yeah, if you're just listening, uh, Montero's wearing our, one of our Kawaii Cutie shirts. And we're going to put a uh, coupon code for the Kawaii Cutie shirts with this episode, since that's what Montero is wearing. Yay. Um, so look for that. Yeah, I'm oh. shocked. I have six cats. Not one of them has shown up. But I had to get the shirt that had mermaids on it. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's got the mermaids on there, too. Yeah. It's so cute. It's so cute. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience today? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I'm shy again, Shay. Um, You're shy. I know. Like, the on the spot. Like, what do you want to talk about? I don't know what to talk about. I wonder where all my cats are. I promised viewers that there would be animal interruptions. Where are my cats? <sighs> Disappointing. <laughs> uh, what else do I want to talk about? Um, we could talk about uh, Miss Mermaid USA, Miss Mermaid International. Yes. Yes. Tell us about that. So the last two years, Mermaid, uh, Miss Mermaid USA has been running for a couple of years now. Um, and it only really got pretty big about two-ish years ago. Um, okay. And they pretty much, all, all 52 states are open, um, including D.C. and um, Puerto Rico. And basically, it's, it's a, the parent company is Miss Mermaid International. And it is a beauty pageant paired with mermaid skills. So basically everyone in the U.S. competes to figure out who will be Miss Mermaid USA. And then you go on and you compete overseas with the rest of the world. But it's not just a beauty pageant. It's really based in charity and community service and all the proceeds and everything that are raised from applications go to the winner's charity. So it's fun. It's fun. Um, we're also working on pushing for, I'm going to bring up inclusivity again. There's currently an age limit for um, 36 is the age cap and you do have to be female or female presenting. Um, but we are pushing the parent company for more inclusivity there. But for the last two years, I have been very honored to uh, be Miss Mermaid Montana. So I'm Mermaid Montana, the Manatee Mermaid, Miss Mermaid Montana. Say that three times fast. <laughs> I don't know if I can say it one time. Okay. Mermaid Montera, the manatee mermaid, Miss Mermaid Montana. Yes. You got it. I did it. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun. And while I'm not currently residing in Montana and I was, I had plans to go and do things with my title and then pandemic, global pandemic. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, mm, you have a plan and not just like the universe interfering it was like yeah, so, yeah. but so that, that was really fun and they're going to be announcing new winners um they've actually uh, today they started they started today um i have applied for maryland this year um, i'm not really optimistic because i have a lot of competition uh, which is a good thing it's a good thing <laughs> uh my bet if i if i can just go in and slide in my bet i think my bet's going to be for anna felicia lee I think uh, it's going to be Miss Mermaid Maryland. Okay. Okay. 
Well, we'll see. And that yeah. will have been announced by the time this goes live. So I got, I got all that. I got all like the fun stuff. I got my sashes. Oh, that's and very cool. Above me are my crowns. Ooh, I see three crowns. Three, three crowns. Because I spoil myself. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I have one crown for uh, 2019, one crown for 2020, um, and one crown that I got for myself because crowns were running a little bit late, and I wanted a crown. <laughs> because I'm not I'm you get to be a plus size mermaid in a pageant. Not very often. Not very okay. often. So. Nice so to yeah. Okay. So Miss Mermaid USA is mm -hmm. working be more inclusive, RE, gender, and age. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Miss Mermaid USA as far as like body diversity? Um, I know pageants in general like are not exactly the place I think to go to as a fat person. Like that, like, I mean, what is a beauty pageant? What is beauty? You know, like, like exactly. Well, that's a lot of things that we've been pushing for this pageant as well. Um, there are several um, plus size MERS that hold titles and have held titles for these last two years. But um, we'd love to see more. I mean, I don't want, a, I, a lot of people were kind of being like, I don't know if this is something I could do because it's a beauty pageant. And once again, just do the thing. <laughs> Inclusivity, do the thing, try for it anyway. I mean. They're trying to be a very inclusive pageant and the fact that you don't even technically have to have a mermaid tail to be able to apply. As long as you've got a good platform, you have the mermaid mindset, as I keep calling it. Um, so they're, they're, they're trying to be more inclusive in who can already apply. Um, so it doesn't, it's not just, it's not just a beauty contest. I mean, if you go overseas, it, you get to the international bit and it is run by a modeling company. Um, and there is a swimsuit portion and a ball gown portion and a talent portion, all of that, but, but it's fun. And anybody right. can, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a skinny, skinny mermaid to do it. Anybody can do it. Okay. Um, so overseas, it's like swimsuit, ball gown, mm -hmm. kind of what we think of when we think beauty pageant. Yes. How does all that work here or in the U.S.? Well, this year they're doing it a little bit differently than they did in the past. Um, and they are ranking top tw every, every state will get its title. Every state will have one title holder. Um, North Dakota, I believe is still open. If anyone watching is in North Dakota, um, and wants to apply, I don't think North Dakota has had any applicants yet. Um, but they're basically ranking, ranking you based on your application and the community service that you've done, the charities you support, the things you've you know been doing in your community to bring change, bring positivity and all that fun stuff. Um, and then the top 25 are going to be kind of competing at Mermagicon this upcoming year, which that's in, currently still in May. Um, and then I believe they're doing an evening gown portion there. Um, as well as a distance swim and a underwater posing portion. And then from there at Mermagicon, I believe they will be choosing Miss Mermaid USA and that person will be going overseas to compete with the rest of the mermaids. That sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds um, like a lot of fun. It's just, it's fun. I encourage people to try it if they want to. I know pageanting is not for everybody. I know that there's been a lot of there's been a lot of opinions and everything kind of flying around it from the age restriction to why are people representing states they don't live in? The answer to that was not enough people applied. And this year it looks a lot better. This year it looks like everyone is representing the state that they live in. So. Okay. Okay. So um, it is, yeah, it's really more people are getting involved and that's what everybody wants. We want everybody to be involved and <laughs> have a chance to cool. win money for your charity. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been very like controversial uh this pageant this year. Um other than being Miss Mermaid Montana, Montera, <laughs> the Manatee Mermaid. Do you have like do you do anything else with the 
pageant? Like, are you involved in other ways? Like, do you have a little nope. inside scoop, any behind the scenes? No? Nope. <laughs> it's just something else that I did uh, these past two years that I've done with the mermaiding that's been fun. And I encourage other people to go try it because a lot of people, that's another body body type thing that a lot of people look at that stereotype of skinny, skinny white ladies in bathing suits. Try it. It's fun. They're not discriminating against body type. They're not discriminating against skin color. Try it. It's fun. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Very cool. And um, yeah, just for people who are curious about mm -hmm. the pageant, I know Mermaid Vlogs, um, Abby the Everyday Mermaid did an episode about the pageant where she interviewed the people in charge. I know, um, let's see. Uh, Finn's magazine, I think, is going to be having a lot to say about the pageant because they've been running like some opinion polls. So check that out if you're curious. And then uh, Mermaid Tiva, I believe, is the one who spearheaded a like mermaid at any age campaign just to do a poll to see how old uh, merfolk are to kind of try to put some data behind pushing the pageant to um, increase its age limit. So there's been a lot of I have to say bye to my fisherman. Um, there's been a lot of uh, controversy around this pageant, um, but I don't know, a live mermaid pageant. Well, sounds fun. Um, it's weird. I mean, there's, definitely, there's definitely, we've got the mermaid drama going because we're all mermaids and somehow always surrounded by the mermaid drama. But- Fish is too salty. I mean, it's just what it is. Yeah, it is just what it is. <laughs> and there are always gonna be people who have their opinions about pageants and pageants as a whole. But so far, for me, at least, it has just been a fun, positive experience. Um, it's promoted me to do more. Um, I'm always wanting to do more. And, you know, with that title behind me, I really felt that I could. Um, okay. So it's been, it was a very fun experience. And I encourage people to give it a try. Um, we are pushing for more inclusivity in it. So hopefully we'll, we'll see even some more positive change in the future. But Very well, very well. Um, and if not, we'll just have to run our own pageant, Shay. Right? Um, yes, you all should absolutely um, <laughs> create. <laughs> I guess it's hard because it's like, I mean, what is a pageant, right? Like, so it's weird almost to be like, I'd like an inclusive, to me, like I'd like an inclusive beauty pageant because it's like, what is beauty like it's all subjective it's all based on like all these things like if we start deconstructing like what's wrong with a pageant like i don't know that you can like i don't know rebuild it in the right way like um for me personally even though we're interviewing you but for me personally like if we want to think about it most of the things that pageantry is based in is like problematic and i kind of like to see it dismantled right but also, it's fun. Like, I like, you know, I like the pomp and circumstance. I like the beauty. I like the drama. I like the magic. And so to me, it's like, okay, this stuff, like, it's, you know, it's fun. But if we think too, not think too hard about it. If we dig very slightly beneath the surface, it's largely problematic. So, like, I personally don't have a vision personally of, like, a... I don't know, like a woke beauty pageant because like it's all it's like antithetical. On the other hand, if it's just like we're calling it a pageant, but really it's more about, like you said, like your charity work or, you know, more of a skills based thing, you know, that could be cool. And um, when you start that, let me know. We'll totally interview <laughs> you and try to like help boost your platform as much as we can. Um, I've got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> We all have a lot going on. We're, we're I, mean, I, don't I don't know if that'll, if that'll be anything that actually that? Uh, happens or not. Uh, yeah, we'll see the the, the Miss Manatee pageant. Um, Miss Manatee pageant. I'm going to go ahead and like, trademark that like right now, but don't don't expect to see it for a couple years, you know. Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> but, yeah, no, if you, if you take away the parts that are an issue and look back at every you know, pageant movie you've ever watched. Look back at Miss Congeniality. You don't want the skinny, popular, perfect girl to win. You want the sweet person to win. You want the person who has actual talent to win. 
I mean, <laughs> the Parks Parks and Recreation has an episode about it, about whether it's, you know, the skinny, tiny, little, itty bitty, you know, perky little thing, or this woman who's playing concertos on the piano. <laughs> so it's talent. It's It's more than take out the beauty and put in the talent and the charity and the things you you do to be better and make the world around you better i think is really what it's really what it's more about than than beauty okay all right well i look forward yes, you know to... anyway i found beauty's only skin deep yes 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 and completely subjective and all of those things so i look forward to uh supporting a uh you know, a manatee Merson pageant one day um, <laughs> <laughs> in the future. Are you enjoying Fat Mermaids Make Waves? Are you planning on attending Mermagicon in August? Make sure you have a great seat at our live recording of Fat Mermaids Make Waves on Sunday, August 8th at 9.30 a.m. at Mer Magicon. We are going to have a full panel of fabulous fat folk talking to you about their experience mermaiding. See you there. Um, now, what else um, do you want to talk about? I'm just forgot to bring that up to talk about it. And I gave us I gave us a good 20 minute conversation there. Yes, I just want to say, like, I mean, on the on the on the subject of like fishes be salty, do you have anything else you'd like to uh <laughs> to address? There's always some salty fish. Oh, I, yeah, I, I could bring up another thing. There's another thing. So, sure, yeah. Um, if anyone has seen, there's a new tail maker based in the UK, Mermaid Lucia. Um, she's most well known. She's doing the um, the luminescent tails right now that have the LEDs in them, Ooh. and they're also the creator of the snake tail. The snake tail had a lot of controversy around it because um, you could buy it. At, I think it comes up to like six meters. Very long, very long tail. And a lot of people were saying you shouldn't be advertising this. It's not safe. Okay. And of course, you gotta go look at any mermaid tail. Is any mermaid tail safe? You need to know what you're doing. You should never swim alone. You should preferably be in the presence of a lifeguard. You need to know how to get out of your tail. There's there's a lot of you know a lot of things that go into is a mermaid tail safe? Can you swim? Like <laughs> can you float? If you can't swim, can you float? There's a lot of things about that. Um and amidst this controversy, you know, I was kind of looking into it because a lot of people were saying, well, there's no monofen, it's not safe. But we don't normally swim with a monofen. You know, a lot of us mermaids learned our mermaid swim by just doing that dolphin kick without anything. And sure, anytime you add fabric, you're adding drag. You just have to be aware of your drag. And in some of uh, the earlier prototype tails from bigger tail makers, there were drag in tails. You know, we've so these were things that I felt we'd gotten used to. Okay. So I didn't feel like it was maybe necessarily as concerning as. Some people were feeling that it, it's definitely concern. Everything, every tail should come with a disclaimer of do not use this unless you're a professional. This tail weighs this much. If you cannot float, if you are not positively buoyant, chances are you're going down. <laughs> like, so that, that's a, that's always a big thing. But so I kind of reached out to this tail maker and I was just kind of inquiring a little bit more about the tail. I was very interested. It was unlike anything we've seen before. It's a tail okay. without a fin and it, flows in the water incredibly it's gorgeous um i ended up getting one. <laughs> oh yeah um and they asked me if i would be their north american ambassador so i'm oh. actually the north american ambassador for the snake tail and i've actually not officially announced that anywhere yet well um, congratulations thank you um yeah, so I, I have an unboxing video. Um, I have a review video that I will be putting together. I think I also have a YouTube channel. You asked me how you guys could support me. Um, I think I also have YouTube. I just haven't posted there very much. I okay. intend to post there more. I need to go dig up all my old unboxing videos and dump them over there. Um, but I wanted to do an honest review of this tale that has not yet been brought to America. No one else has it yet because a lot of people have been concerned about it. Um, as a plus size mermaid, I am very unbothered by 
concerns about drowning in my tail, like I should say. I am very positively buoyant. That fish float. That fish float. It is a fact. It is physics. That fish float. So I figure I can't drown in it. I figure <laughs> I, I can't drown in it. I was like, I'm, go I'm going to a pool with my friends. There is a lifeguard on duty. We're in shallow enough water. Let's give it a try. And it's just a very cool tail. The inside is a canvas sheath with boning. So it okay. holds the shape, but it moves. It's really cool. I really can't wait to share these videos because it's a very unique tail. It's definitely not a beginner tail. I mean, I am going to say that all over the place. I don't think it should be banned. A lot of people were saying you shouldn't even be selling this. It's a death trap. I don't feel that it is a death trap. It's very easy to get out of too. I got out of it in two seconds. We took video of that as well. So awesome. I'm going to do full review of this tail at one point. Um, that's very, very unique. So that's something that was a, uh, there was some salty mermaid tea for a little bit. Um, and I'm hoping to dispel a little bit of that, you know, no tail. I mean, no tail really is a beginner tail. You need to be able right. to swim. You need to be able to float and you need to be able to get it off fast in case there's an emergency. And those are all things, you know, you need to learn right at the beginning of, of mermaiding. So, but I don't, I don't think it's as unsafe as people were thinking it was. It takes me longer to get out of my mythic. I can get out of my mythic in about 10 seconds. Um, yeah, snake tail, two seconds, literally two seconds. Cause there's no monofin to wiggle right, out of. Right, right. You just, no, you just, no zipper, you have to, it's literally you pull a string and you're out. So, okay, so that's I'm excited about that. I have, I have this, I wonder if you can see the skin. Oh yeah. Oh, Dr. My <laughs> Dr. My Light. It's okay. You can see it up in that corner. Is that green? Yeah. Little little sneak peek okay. right there. I'm gonna fix my light. <laughs> your light. Mermaid Mama is fixing her light. I'm everything is cool. It's broken. All right. Oh, that rhyme. Fix your light. Broken. <laughs> Cool. Should have seen it coming. All my cords are twisted. <laughs> well, Montero, like, thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking to me and giving us some not breaking your light. <laughs> not breaking your light because I'm sure you know you'll need it for other awesome things. Um, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Um, no. no. Mermaiding is for everybody. Mermaiding is for everybody. That's a great point to end on. We'll keep making waves. Um, I guess I should say, you know, follow Mermaid Montera on her Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> and TikTok. Follow Society Fat Mermaids on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, buy cool t-shirts like my squad tee, like Montera's kawaii cutie tee. From Society of Fat Mermaids, we are the home of the $15 6XL t-shirt. Uh, I'm going to do everything in my power to keep us at that price point for our just basic unisex tees. Um, we have other designs that cost more, but, you know, if you want a fun mermaid t-shirt, um, hit us up. Um, subscribe to our podcast um wherever you found this podcast this is new so it's not live yet so i'll do better about saying all those things um <laughs> we'll be on youtube so you know hit that plus sign and add us to your feed um thank you for hanging out with us um and yeah everybody keep making waves yeah. thank you. oops i stopped my camera i was supposed to stop <laughs> all right we're gonna ask the and